Ajay Shavastam joins us. Let's take our conversation forward. And Ajay is uh, running late because I'm sure he is dealing with risk management. <laughs> no, no, Everybody has to deal with risk management in this market. It's okay. So my question is, bad is getting worse. But will it get terrible from here? Because there is no rule book which says markets cannot fall. Just because markets have fallen 30%, they can always fall more. Uh, good morning, Nikonj. Yeah, you know, the rule book says that when things get bad, they get ugly. Uh, but the Indian issue is that the optimism of the retail investor is still unwavering. So, you know, the markets are not in a mood to capitulate when they can find a bottom. We are still getting public issues at a PE of 100 and above. Uh, people are still buying shares at PEs of 50 and above. So, you know, and so till the point of capitulation, one cannot say the market has bottomed out and that's far away from here today. Yes, we will see certain very bad days in this market as because this quarter, typically April, May, June is a weak quarter for performance, financials, everybody actually. So nothing tells us that after this result, there is any significant positive which comes in the market. A negative could surprise us. Things like a big announcement which we saw today in terms of an urban unemployment package scheme, that could put a huge dent in fiscal of this country given the way the debt situation is. So, you know, one has to be careful in what we are trading. And as we discussed the last time with you, maybe on a Hindi channel, you know, or maybe this one, that uh, you don't have to buy every time, right? Do you really have to buy every time? So is, is this one of those markets where you need to just wait it out or start even uh, start booking profits? Look, it's good to be optimistic because what we've learned by looking at history is that when you've bought the fall in last 10 years, you've been rewarded. Is this the fall where you say, look, I'm going to be buying the fall or think contra, which is that in last 10 years, inflation and margin pressures were not that persistent. So the regime has changed. It's time to get out with wherever gains are. No, I think Nikun, the, the lesson out here is that you also need to book profit. You're right, people have been rewarded. But the fact is, how many of the people who were rewarded took the money off the table? So if you look at the two-year returns on mutual fund now, they're almost going negative at this point of time, or perhaps after today will become negative. So it's not necessary that you know buying in a, on a weekday or a week market necessarily leads to profit because you can have a cycle, it goes up, it goes down, and you don't sell, so that means you're where you are. Look at the banking index. It gives such fantastic returns, it's back to where it is. So, you know, so it's not about that market rewards people who buy at the lows. Market rewards people who actually also sell at a highs at the end of the day. Buying is simple. It's, I think, the selling which is the more difficult when we lose to. And today's market tells us that you need to look very carefully at a portfolio and have a very clear idea why you're holding these stocks. It's not about optimism. It's about reality to say that some of the stock will be find very difficult to perform given the inflationary scenario, demand cut down. And as we discuss a big urban policy, if it comes through in the uh, in the next couple of weeks, that could be a big game changer for the fiscal deficit of the market. So this is a time when you need to be sure why you're keeping your stock, not to be sure that, you know, let me buy and just hold it. So sell what you're not convinced. Sell if you got some. You know, I would say if you got good profits in consumer stocks, this is the time to book it and move it elsewhere because those stocks aren't going anywhere in a hurry. Mm. Yeah, sure, that they are not, Ajay. But, you know, most um, medium to long-term investors have already bought at the 2020 lows. So, I mean, technically speaking, all of their portfolio is sitting at profits, not just consumer stocks. I wanted to understand where is it that you would be wary about... Um, you know, growth or the stock price is moving up higher from here yeah, outside the list of consumption? I tell you something, you know, it's something not into the industry. Now I'm seeing a new trend coming up and I'm sure our regulatory authorities are looking at it. Is company management's coming and telling us that they have done the best ever. When the results come out, there is no best ever. We have a very large real estate company which said we had done the best ever booking, best ever sales, best ever everything. When the result came out, the turnover was lower than last year this quarter. So the point is, I think investors need to be now start getting wary. And this is the first time you're seeing a phenomenon. And we saw it at the peak with the housing development company. We saw it at the banking company, which is a two stalwart. That there is a huge amount of stuff being told to the investors, which is not translating to this thing. So I'm just telling investors and people is, listen, 
you need to look at what the management is saying and take it to the pinch of salt because that's where you want to be very careful. If management are very hardcore pitching that they will do best ever, follow through will not be there. The second point is, where do you park your money at the end of the day? I think I'm still on the holding the view that dividend paying stocks, high dividend paying stocks, the REITs, the integrated trust kind of stocks are the best place to park your money because they are cash flow driven entities. They have no risk. They sell on cash and they take the money in. Yes, commodity has price risk, but they don't have a liquidity. They have abundant liquidity. They have dividends coming through and they have monopoly. So I would still hold the view that compared to manufactured consumer products, I would really be on the side of the producers at the end of the day. And some sectors, you know, you want to avoid a sector like a cement where you're seeing competition coming and demand is not going to be so great. But you also have an opportunity to go at lower than the price at which the most successful industrial group in this country, as far as equity investors are concerned, is going in. To example, I'm not recommending it, but you look at the dynamics. Adani companies have made the best money for investors, right? In through thick and thin, right? For the last one and a half, two years. You are allowing an entry price to get in with them in a cement business, which is below their entry price at the end of the day. Now you can take a call. Industry will will have a beating. I think I'm telling you it's going to be bad for the industry. But should you want to take a bet with the promoter, maybe that's the way to go look at investing your money. You know, Ajay, I'm completely on board with you when you say you don't have to compulsorily and necessarily keep buying. Uh, what I want to understand is, at a personal and a portfolio level, how much cash levels are you currently sitting on? Because this doesn't seem like that 2020 kind of crash that it's going to get away anytime soon. It seems like we're now headed in for slightly time-wise elongated kind of a corrective phase. See, the beauty of this market is you don't have to sit in the cash. That's why I was mentioning. Now you've got opportunities like, I'm not recommending, I'm just giving you what my portfolio is, like things like integrate trust, things like power grid trust, things like real estate REITs. They are giving you quarterly returns. The share prices are good. People are buying because asset values are going up at the end of the day. So you really don't need to be in cash at this point of time. you got to be make every rupee of your kind of work for you. So India offers the opportunity today. We didn't have it earlier. We have got it now. So we have parked most of our cash in these kind of structured instruments at this point of time. Cash would be not in, uh, maybe it's about 10, 15% of what we want to invest in the market. But most of it, if we need to invest in equity, we will move it out of these portfolios and, uh, you know, bring it and bring it into the mainline equities. Uh, you know, the second part is that, you know, you talk about cash and so on and so forth. Forget cash. Let the interest rate come to eight and a half, nine percent in fixed deposit. You'll find the reverse flow. You'll find people going to FDs, which is not a bad idea. Already FDs and NBFCs are at eleven percent or ten and a half, eleven percent. If banks go to eight and a half, nine percent, I think that's a good place to park. So asking a question is, I think you should have minimum twenty-five to thirty percent, or maybe more than to that portfolio in cash or REITs or something trust securities at least 35 to 40 percent because this market will give you a lot of opportunities april may june is a bad quarter so with the results come out at the end of the day in so august and july you will have a lot of opportunities to buy your favorite stocks ajay the last time you were with us you said it's, it's good to pack your bags go home forget about the portfolio come back in uh, in june are you now changing that to july no, I did not say. I said, maybe I can only afford to be on holiday up to June. I never said I'll go home. I said, I'll go on a holiday so I'd have at least temptation to buy anything. But if you can afford to be also out in, you know, uh, in June, uh, good luck to you. I think it's a very sensible decision. Very good use of money, if you ask me. And not enough facetiously, but genuinely speaking, that if you can take that time out, you're the lucky few who can do it, do it. Because, you know, being at home, being in the office, the temptation of buy is there. There's no reason to be tempted in this market. There is nothing to buy. You know, there will be odd stories, odd success stories. But, you know, enjoy. If you can afford June holiday, good luck to you, my friend. You've done better than I've done in my life. Liza, Nikunj also says, uh, no trade is a trade. Um, Ajit, you know, you, you last time you were here, you spoke about two themes, which you were buying into, and that was about two, three weeks ago. One was, you know, the summer theme, which you did with Varun Beverages. You'd also talked about a theme around soda ash. So with the last uh, sell-off, since we've had you last on the channel, what else have you seen as an opportunity? I think, you know, specialty chemicals, again, are coming in. The stocks are very expensive. 
but there is a huge demand that we see in the market which is coming up in the you know in terms of the supply is uh, you know not there enough in the market so i think that's one product the number two is of course which we have bought into a little bit is the outsourcing contracting story on the garment side couple of companies that we bought have done extremely well in the market and their demand traction is very very good the third industry which corrected quite substantially is the cotton textile industry which is a certain little buy and the last one which is now kind of seemingly coming to the threshold of buy perhaps is going to be the large fashion wear companies because there also the industry is consolidating the things are happening at this point of time so i think roughly speaking these are the four new sectors that we found to be working uh as we discussed multiplex has disappointed us to the performance so but we are waiting to see what will happen to them commodities i am still game that listen i'll go to peace i get good dividends i can spend the money so i think the theme remains the same and uh, soda i should not run it through i think my view is is going to go on for some more time because capacities don't get built up overnight everybody is at 100% there's not a single player who has 1% capacity left and you can't put it up before 2 years this capacity so i think you have legs cash flows of these companies uh, be with them i think they'll do give you good returns really appreciate your time